Right, today's going to be fun because <laughs> here's Vic. Vic's back on the channel. Hi. Um, and we've got a really interesting build for you today. So as you know, we've been training for the Frontier 300. We're going to do that 300 epic gravel ride together. In a day, just yeah. to clarify. That's part of why it's epic. But we did have a problem. You didn't have a bike. We entered and I didn't have a gravel bike. And then you, Sally very kindly lent you her top stone and you kind of yes. went to gravel. Yes, yeah. I've been riding... Of, yeah, friend's bike, Sal's bike. Oh, you've met Sal yeah, on the yeah. channel, yeah. And then disaster, you borrowed Sal's time. I was coerced into <laughs> trying Sally's time bike. And obviously, within three pedal strokes, it was obvious that I needed uh, a time gravel bike and not any other popular brand. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got one of the time ADHX 45s in a, ready to paint. So this is going to be a story of the start of a big journey or the middle of a journey i don't really know so what we've done is we've tried to recreate your journey for the journey of a lifetime in this frame mm -hmm. and we're going to build it and this absolutely stunning frame here is full of little memoirs and metaphors and all sorts to take with you on your journey absolutely because every bike is a journey i think every journey you do on your bike you know that's for you whatever this, it is this video is going to be a journey because somehow i'm going to teach you how to build this bike how to build a bike i know and we're going to start by taking a hacksaw to it oh my goodness first thing we're going to do is get the seat post in very loosely just so we can get it in the stand i'm going to bring it up to roughly where that limit mark is so that we can clamp it here. So that anything we might scratch it with on here is all going to happen below the mark that you're going to see. Yeah. Okay, so I'm putting it in to there. So we've already set this as being your preferred height. In fact, yeah. we've measured this off your old, your other, your your old time, your other time. And Huge fan. We've added about a centimetre and a half worth of spaces so that we know this is going to be a safe this place is going to be cut. Okay. Yeah. So we need to mark this with a sharp pick. We're going to put a cut mark in here. So we're just going to use that to sort of dig into the carbon and put a scratch mark. That's a jazzy yeah. way to Be do bold. that. Be bold, yeah. You have to push fairly hard, try not to scratch the rest of it. This is the thing that always happens, right? I don't know if anyone else, this happens with anyone else. Like, Paul explains it and then does it because it's his job. And then a human tries to do it and you're just like, I don't know what you're talking about. Does it matter if it's a bit of a rubbish line? Mm, yeah, it does, yeah. Oh. Let me do that. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Hacking away bleeding. at that <laughs> at the moment. We've got blood already. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's take the stem Oh, I didn't have off. to feel the way around. No, no, we're just going to use that to, as a cut mark, so that's where we're going to use. So. Oh, this is where I don't want to think about how much this frame cost. <laughs> I'm sure there aren't many people that uh, get to do this to their bike. <laughs> and for good reason, bring your tame bike mechanic with you when <laughs> you do it. So what we've got set up here, so this is an abrasive saw for doing cutting carbon. Yeah. I'm going to keep this really wet, but you'll need to put a mask on. No problemo. I'm guessing it goes yep. on there. And that comes over your head as well. So I'm going to keep this really, really wet. Okay. So let's give that a really good spray. This is the cutting edge in here, so cut, let's get, get all that in there. I'm going to come back to this several times and keep it wet. Yep, no worries. And this is all aligned. Yep, so we're going to use this as the saw guide. Mm-hmm. So your saw goes in here. It's good. So go slowly with it. Keep an eye, and that's it. It's good. So as you get close to the end, yeah. if you can try and hold on to the other side of this. On here. That's it. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel. Oh, okay. That's so just going to stop. It. That's just going to stop it splintering at the last minute. Yeah. So yeah. just keep going. Let, let the saw do the work. So almost there, nice and steady, nice and easy. That's it, perfect. Like it on board. That is not bad. That's it. Board. I can go in the bin. <laughs> so what I want you to do, this is all dusty here, <laughs> and we're just going to, as you undo all this, just gather it all up with that white cloth and try and wipe it all with your gloves on and then get rid of all that carbon waste. Cool, it's got a little bit of tidying up to do. So yeah. you keep hold of that. This is a fun little tool. So we're gonna to use this wet. So you're gonna to go to the sink and completely soak this and use this wet. So this does the outside. This does the inside, and we're just going to put a small chamfer on that just to tidy it up. Uh, what about those bits, Devane? So let's have a quick look. I'm done inside and out, get rid of all the sharp edges. That is a very neat job. So there's a little bit of sandpaper there on the side. Again, use that wet. Yeah. And all I want you to do is go in that direction, because what happens with time is you get this little fraying of the carbon edges. Yeah. And just by sanding only in one direction, you'll just take that off into a nice chamfer. Going to send it for inspection. <laughs> <laughs> 
seems better than it was. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Good job. Okay. Cool. Good job on the fork, but we don't need that for a bit because we need to do a bit of cable weaving. Ooh. So first thing is to get this dropper. So we've got two cables to run. The cable that's going to run all the way down the seat post, up here and out. Mm -hmm. We're not going to connect that up right now. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the brake hose as well to come out as well. Mm -hmm. So first of all, in this box here, you should see a big long length of cable. And none of these, no? Nope, not just yet. This is the stuff that's going to stop it wrapping around and making a right noise. Ah, okay. I, I, I have no idea. So no assumption. I, I just don't know. So this is so made up of an inner cable and an outer cable. Yeah. We're just going to put the inner cable to one side for now. There you I'll go. look after that. Cool. And this cable, we're going to go through here. And so I'm guessing I only need one of these yeah, kits because we've only got one cable. Yeah. Total noob. <laughs> no clue. Everything needs to be explained like it's too a bit. So let's get that threaded through. Oh my lord. This is so exciting. That's going to poke out down here somewhere. As it does, you should just guide it. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, mm -hmm. that's tricky. Yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think that's it. It, it. it will hit the seat post. Perfect. Okay. And then the inner tube's still in the... That needs to yeah. go in a bit further. Just shove that down as far as you can. Rear Pack brake. number one. Rear brake. Okay, so do we do the same thing with this? Put the... Yep. Cool. Let's just unpack what's actually in here. So, so this is my... This is just one of the brakes. Yep. And each brake comes with all this stuff. Yeah, so that's the part we're interested in right now. Yeah. So let's take off that protective packaging. So I'm guessing we take this off and then thread it through? No, or do we... no we're going to leave that all intact. So, okay. So this part here goes on here. Yeah. And this cable is an entry point just here. Yeah. We're going to make it go through the bottom bracket all the way up here and back out this, this hole here. Okay. There we go. Excellent. And that's kind of lined up. So we've got two bolts here. So this caliper is going to sit like this um, okay with that on the washer on yeah top. the washer is going to be underneath okay. so we're going to come in from underneath okay i don't know if they're straight or something they don't want to go any further than that right. and i don't want to force it because apparently you should never do that yeah absolutely well done <clears throat> it doesn't need to be mega tight right now because we need to come back and adjust this but i'm just going to make that a little bit tighter that makes sense look at that brake caliper so, a brake caliper. so we need a bit of cable insulation in there Sorry. yeah Oh, for this one? For the brake, yep. Oh, shouldn't we have done that first? No, because you came in from a smaller hole. Oh, of course, yeah. Bike building is quite simple once you know the order of operations. Okay. It's, um, people go wrong when they try and skip stages and then have, they go, they have to take things apart. And... Yeah, well, it's like we all want to rush everything. Don't yeah. We? Oh, that's easier. Done that with the other one. Comes together pretty quick, doesn't it? Well... Uh, yeah, I mean, we've got one brake caliper. Yeah, I mean, so oh, yeah, I mean we're half, <laughs> and half, half an hour in, we've got yeah, one brake caliper. Been here for ages. Cool. Right, let's get the fork back installed. So we need a fork and we're going to need That's some grease. Next up, front brake. Yeah. Now, I will warn you that this is a really, really tricky job, so we're going to okay. do some different stuff. So this one needs to go in this hole and out this hole. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to take the caliper off. I don't like doing this because it means that we now need to think about all the dot fluid that's going to be floating around because we're going to break yeah we're going to break that thing. We now need to worry about all the dot fluid. Oh, I see. And there's a, there's obviously fluid in here, and we need to keep the fluid in there. Well, the fluid's going to come out, but the fluid in there is quite toxic. So it's right, it's not that bad, but it's yeah, it's dot it's dot fluid. So that's why I put my gloves on. And as it comes out, we're just going to make sure we seal up all the ends, and you know we're aware of where everything's going to be. What is dot fluid? It's brake fluid. It's the same stuff you've got in your cars and everything else. Yeah. But most other brands use a mineral oil, which is an awful lot kinder to skin and eyes and everything else. Is there an advantage of one over the other other than the obvious physiological? Well, <laughs> no, things? but the manufacturers would have you believe that there is. Ah, OK. <laughs> cool. So we need another one of them bolts. Yeah, we've got some downstairs. We'll go and get them in a second. That's OK for now, though. I noticed that you've asked Tom as well to make sure all the ends of these are all glossed out as well yes <laughs> see all the pretty bits all the pretty bits so your business is sports recovery kendall which is purple yes, and green the colors green. So this yep. is the colors of your company yeah and where did the brush stroke idea come from uh, it came from tom yeah um we didn't have that originally i wanted the inside green and the outside purple and then through the design process that we did with tom he suggested this as a an addition to what else what to the other stuff we had going on yeah. the bike and i loved it and I think it's worked really, really well. Time to put so. the headset on. So what we need to do is we need 
grease on this surface. Bearing goes over the top of all of this. We put oh, grease okay. on that bearing. Yeah. yeah. And then we put this to one side. Yeah. And then we put the grease on the thing and then we're going to link everything together. Okay. So this is our grease? Yep. That we sell her about there. Yep. yep. Because it's in a syringe, hopefully you won't get grease all over your fingers. Well, we'll see. So How much uh, do I need? Do I just paint on a little bit? No, be, be quite liberal. Oh. Yeah, oh, we can give it a good squish, and I'll probably keep pushing down on that. As I go? As you go, yeah. Cool. Let's grab one of those bearings. And do they go that way? Yep, perfect. Yep, cool. Now cover this surface with, with grease as well. Oh, okay. You'll see why, because this is the best way of keeping all your hands clean of grease. It's just a, a nice system of doing it, so you don't end up with grease everywhere. Yeah. All over your hands and smeared everywhere. So what we need to do, we're going to put the fork in, and we're going to feed that cable through. Right. Yeah, so we want this to be on this side, this on the side right of the side. frame. Yeah? Yeah. Now, this one, we want to come out on this side of the frame, and so does this one. This one's all going to go to your left-hand shifter. So as we feed the fork in, yeah, we want these two cables to on, be on this. on this side and this one to be on this side. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, we just haven't had the joy of taping, so I'm just going to pop that yep. up. Yep. No, um, That's good. Totally yep. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Didn't do that. Until that, until that comes through. <laughs> until right. my hands. You've got grease on your hands. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Hey, I'm a bike mechanic now. I can have greasy fingers. Cool. So this is a compression ring. So you see how this has got a cutout. All the cables are going to sit there. So All of them. So yeah, this is going to go in the order of front brake, dropper post, rear brake. So uh, front brake, dropper is that one. Yep. Yeah. And then that's the rear brake. Yep. I'll hold on to it. But okay. you're going to need to just wiggle this around. So this is central enough to so the crown rate. So this compression ring will drop into that bearing. Try not to... Um, say my thoughts out loud because <laughs> no one wants to hear it's that. just like why the f did they design a bike like this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think but why be, is it like this there'll be an awful lot of people in the comments sharing that <laughs> thought with you because this is um this it, this new method of internal cable routing is both loved and hated in equal measure one it looks fantastic well it looks one's amazing already done, yeah but getting there is um is okay. a challenge oh uh, is that is that enough is that yep that's that cool. And this is going to be the top cap. You see it's got these two little relocating lugs. Yeah. Yeah, so the cables need to go through it and out of that hole, and those two little lugs are going to locate with these. With it. Yeah. Okay, okay. So perfect. Well done. Cool. Right, i still got hold of this. So this is your stem. stem. All those cables now need to go through that hole and out that hole. Oh, my word. Yeah, and keep it all in the same order. So what we're fitting here, this is actually slightly different to what we normally do with time bikes. So this is an FSA top cap. Um, we're going to fit in a vision stem. I know we're mixing and matching all our brands here. The reason it's is because it's a mix and match bike. No, not necessarily. <laughs> we really wanted the shorter and we like the design of the vision stem with all of this, um, which means that you have to run the FSA top cap with this data DCR system. So you're not always having to run that data super box stem. I think when you see it, it kind of suits the more gravelly type of vibe. It's a bit chunkier, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then this goes on this side because this yep. is the rear brake. Yeah. Let me just make yep. sure that is all located down. Is that it's all good? Yep. Yeah. It's good. So this part here is what we call compression, another compression bung. We're going to put this inside. This is going to compress against the inside of the fork. And while you're faffing with that, we've got a, a map of coniston on your top tube. We have got a map of coniston <laughs> on the top tube. Blanked out in raw carbon. Because that's what I paid for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, actually, coniston is kind of what brought me here. So I started open water swimming uh, when I lived in London because that's... It was, a, it was a way of... Uh, it was a trendy thing to do. It was a trendy thing to do, but it was also a way for me of sort of de-stressing and learning to do that in that wasn't in the gym. And I worked up to swimming the length of Coniston. And that's kind of how you and I met, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't doing the swim. <laughs> you weren't doing the swim, but we, we, we met off afterwards. And uh, yeah, now well, here we are, building bikes together. A first date, so to speak. Yeah, and absolutely. And you were a bit dishevelled after spending. How long did it take you? Oh, hours, because I'm a really terrible slow swimmer. But I did it. It took me about four hours to, yeah. to do it. This is your handlebar. So we have gone for a zip handlebar. This is the Explore gravel version, so it's got a bit of a flare to it. So this is just, can I just kind of leave it? Yeah, yep, just leave it fairly loose for now. Yeah, that's it. Because we're going to put it on the wheels soon, and then we're going to make sure everything's in the right place, and then we'll tighten everything down. Okay. And when everything tightens cool. down, we'll, we'll do it. It's everything. a bike. You've got handlebars now. Yeah. Almost a real bike. Almost. Let's give it some levers, shall we? Levers. So we're going for, obviously, the SRAM Force electronic shifting. No! So exciting! <laughs> Not even qualified to have this. <laughs> but 
So you see it gets caught just on this piece of plastic. Uh, so just okay. manipulate it past that little bit of plastic. That's it. And then wiggle it into position. Okay, so then it goes some degree or another around there. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Right. We need to fit some tyres up. So D- these are a gift from DT Swiss. Thank you, DT Swiss. <laughs> I appreciate that. Everything else I've paid for. So we've done a review <laughs> on these wheels already. Thank you. And uh, they're like, yep, gravel wheels, aluminium, solid, solid choice. Yeah. And we, we, talked, we did talk at length, didn't we, about what wheels mm. to get. And and we wanted something wide. Yes. Um, these hit that bomb. We want something durable. Yep. Um, and we weren't too worried about the weight or anything and didn't no. need to be a deep, deep section or anything. No. So these absolutely fit the bill. Very functional adventure We wheels. are fitting these up with some Goodyear Peak tyres. Mm-hmm. So quite grippy for gravel tyres and the full 45 millimetre width. So we're going to put the tyres on the wheel now. Um, but I've heard that or seen that there's this really cool trick that all the bike mechanics do. So I'm going to see if it works for me. Oh my God, it worked. Next up, Ben. Wheels. Yep. Well done. Thank you. Now we now need to get cassettes <laughs> and stuff on here as well. Woohoo! So. so this is the rear one. Yes, 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 that's the real yes. one with the free hub. Got it right. So we have a cassette somewhere in here. So we <laughs> use this for like a, a, a couple of um, bike tests. That's why it looks a bit dirty. I'm that's sorry. fine. No, it's, it's fine. Okay. It's so, cheap. It was cheaper. <laughs> so this is going to go onto the free hub side. That's this side. Yep. yep. Does it literally as it sounds? And just, at the moment, just place it on place top it and then we're going to screw it on using this tool. Okay, so awkward. I'm really worried I'm just going to drop this. It's all right. Don't drop it. That's it. So this is the tool that's going to go in there. Yep. That's a tool. Wow. Yep. And this torque wrench. <gasps> bigger torque wrench. Needs to be set to 35 newton meters, which is quite a lot. It's a lot more than the eight that I couldn't handle <laughs> on the stairer. <laughs> so that's going to click into there. Yeah. And then we need to tighten all that up. Okay. So next up, we need a disc rotor. It's very important. You don't touch the bit that's going to be the braking surface. So when you're handling these, mm-hmm. try and keep your fingers here and don't touch the bit yet. that's really tempting to touch. Okay. And this part needs to be against the spokes. Okay, but yep. we need to... So, yeah, you can just keep coming back with like, like that. Perfect. Oh, did that yep. do it? Was that it? Yep, oh. that was the click. Cool. Right, front wheel exactly the same, except no cassette. No cassette, all right. So you have rear axle, front axle. We need... Grease. A smear of grease... On the whole axle, just, just to prevent corrosion and a bit of grease on the threads as well. All the same blue stuff yeah. that we've been using. Cool. Not going to be a drama, is it? Because There's no mech, no mech on it. That's a pain. No well, mech, no well, chain. Well, we say it's not going to be a drama, but clearly I'm sure I'm capable of making, making it a drama. Okay, so. And then it really is going to look like a bike. I find this so scary. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to get it onto its wheels. Yeah. And then we're going to put your saddle on and put all this in the right place, okay. bolt it all down, mm-hmm. and then we can start correcting it. Because right now we don't mm-hmm. really know exactly where you want everything. So mm-hmm. let's get it on its wheels and it'll all start making sense. So just look down there and try and get all that lined up. Yeah, and then once you're happy, good. we can just nip these two bolts up. Oh my word, the pressure. This is where I'm going to be looking a lot. And again, like finger tight. Yeah, just finger tight for now, just so it doesn't move. That'll okay. be absolutely fine. So the next thing to adjust is we want these handlebars. So what we're going to try and look for is that this part of the bike, this is going to be nice and straight. That's a good starting point. If one's slightly different, we can adjust it. Oh, okay, cool. But so that, that's over with the ground. Yeah. It's like there. Yeah. Yeah. And then these are personal preference, but you want a smooth transition. Let's start there, yeah. Start there, yeah. yeah. Let's start there. Nice having someone hold the bike for you. It is. So I fold that back? Yep, yep. Fold that bit of the... Hold on. Two, three, four, five, six. So it was actually there. <laughs> it feels crazy. I don't want to commit to that. Oh, I can still see it. That's okay. And then we opened up this bit. I didn't know this. you could do all this. It's a really tricky, annoying one because you have to really make sure that tool's engaged. Mm-hmm. Cool. Maybe we'll just How does show that look? That. Oh, it looks great. And maybe cool. we'll just show that bit. Okay. Feel it. Yeah, make sure it's all okay. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think for now that's going to be fine. Cool. Right, what we're going to do is while we have the opportunity, we're going to have a look at this seat post as well because we need to run the cable for this. Mm-hmm. So let's undo this, get the seat post out. We're going to have to go around fishing around for that cable. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and get all this connected up. They're not even remotely no, straight. No, they're not, are they? Not at all. No. But it was really hard. You didn't want me to do them again? No. Are you sure? No, it's too painful. <laughs> I'm going to secretly do it when you're not looking. So this is the dropper lever. Yep. This is a bit weird, but it's going to sit something like this so that when you're on the drops, you can activate it. 
or it seems to me that there's quite a lot of sharp turns and not a lot of space for it yeah it's just more like just making sure this is seated in that little bit so i think once we were pulling it through we just lost lost connection with it so yeah so sort of that creating enough tension yeah. for it to be properly housed. So what I want to yeah. do now is get the saddle on. Yeah. See if we can set your saddle height. And yeah. then we can just make sure that cable's running nice and smooth. Is there a trick to this or am I just going to not understand the puzzle? <laughs> <laughs> so the trick is to try and get it actually into these little grooves. Yeah. Um, but you do time. that. You do that bit. That's cool. I don't think it's very fair to let you bleed the brakes. But I think you should definitely hook up the rear derailleur and get all these bits and pieces finished off okay so what we need to do is put a little bit of grease, grease. on this thread here yeah and that's going to go onto the, the rear mech hanger this bit here needs to be on this side of it so when you put it in you're going to put it in at this right funky angle right up here mm -hmm. and it's going to do this up cool should it make contact or be just above it so that's it just hold it there oh my god yeah i know Do we need to stop and come back to this another day, Paul? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! So, new bike day. We've got the time ADHX custom build. Very exciting. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. I'm out with Sal, as you can see. Going really well. Now I'm warmed up. I was really nervous. Yeah. Because we've got quite a big ride planned. And yeah. I was a little bit anxious. However, the bike's amazing. Everything I think I hoped it would be. Rides really well, hooks up nicely. I like the DI2. I really like uh, my levers here. Um, we spent a lot of time adjusting those, so that was worthwhile. Drop a post I have used. It's a bit of a drama, but it's worth having. Hey guys. The lap's hey, happening hey. at the moment. How many miles, how many miles have you done? 20, uh, almost 30 miles. Not even breaking a sweat. Look at him, it's amazing. Look at him. What else do we like? We like DI2, getting used to that, having different flappy flaps on different sides to change gear. So yeah, let's carry on with the ride. Yay! Like MV, not really, because no. I've got my own bike. Got one. I've got one too. <laughs> but how's it going, Vic? It's going really good. Yeah, thanks, Sal. I'm really comfortable with four and four hours in, and I feel really, really comfortable on the bike. It's definitely a different experience to mountain biking, uh, obviously. But mm. the bike handling thing has really got me. But it's it's just giving. It's brilliant. Yeah, loving it. <laughs> little friend on the trail. Some late just stick gravel. <laughs> the nice thing about the gravel bike is it's super light so it's really easy to hike a bike um personally this terrain and this pitch for me this morning nah but uh it's all good fun Okay, so no kit at all. Uh, so there's a massive irony in this, which is going to make everyone really crack up. I uh, came to a local bike shop on my way home who kindly sorted me out with all the right stuff for my bike. Um, thanks ever so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, Toby, I hope you got some of those biscuits. So um, I've ridden the bike now a couple of times and you're either going to be watching this just before or just after Paul and I have done the Frontier 300 um, which is the 300 crate gravel ride uh, across Scotland we're hoping to do it within 24 hours I think Paul's quite ambitious about our time um, and <laughs> I'm probably a bit more realistic in that it's probably going to take us all day but hopefully not the full 24 hours that's pretty much the reason of why um, we I got this bike and we built it together. Also, it's a journey bike uh, for the riding, but also uh, for me, and I've had it personalised um, by Tom at Big Lit Customs, who you've probably seen on the channel before. And um, I think it just looks really, it looks really good, but there's also a lot of little details on there that are really specific to me and my journey to the Lake District. I used to work in London and I made the move here six years ago now and set up my own business. So there's a lot of things on the bike that you see in the paintwork that represent moves towards that journey. 
journey, things that I left behind and so on. So it's a really lovely touch when I'm, I'm out on the trails to sort of have that. And it's also in my brand colours. Sports Recovery Kendall is my business. Uh, I'm a sports therapist and strength coach. And uh, that's also pretty cool free marketing if you run a business. So yeah, hope you enjoy the video and uh, any questions pop in the comments. <laughs> Thank you.